Hi, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tip. As you know, we are doing a summer series on questions that are asked by you, our viewing audience. Today I have with me four of Navigate's finest. They are Navigate's contract administration coordinators from several states. To my far left, I have Tim Shear from Virginia. Next to him, Vernell Callahan, which represents Alabama. To my right, I have Tom Garindo from Connecticut. And next to him is Nate Greatree from Mississippi. Thank you guys and welcome to today's Tuesday Tip. We're gonna start the questions off, I guess, with Tim. Tim, your question is, I just want to clarify something regarding our latest MOR. It is my understanding that we should be using check stubs as the preferred method of verifying employment income with third party verification, along with a clarification form. Can you expound on that for us, please? Sure, thank you, Vicki. The HUD 4350 specifies for annual and interim recertifications, the preferred method is to pull EIV, the Enterprise Income Verification System, and match that up along with paycheck stubs. If the resident disputes that information, then the agents would move to third party verification directly with the employer or the source of the income. That was pretty clear. The next question I will give to Vernell. Let me see, I have to get you a juicy one. All right, Vernell. The manager says, I have a tenant with a 16-year-old daughter who dropped out of school and became employed full time. Does the minor daughter still receive the $480 dependent allowance? The answer is yes. The household member is under the age of 18, so therefore she is considered a dependent. This reference is found in the HUD handbook, paragraph 5-10A1. Family members under the age of 18 are dependents, and therefore they get the 480 deduction. Thank you. Thank you, that was very good. Tom, your time. Tom, your question. I have a question concerning the Direct Express debit card. Is the balance on the card a savings or a checking balance? I thought the balance was a savings. Could you clarify? Thank you, Vicki. Um, in this case, the manager is correct that HUD says to treat the balance of a Direct Express debit card the same way you would treat a savings account. So when the manager is verifying the resident's assets at move-in or at annual recertification, they would ask the resident to get a printout from an ATM showing the current balance on the card, and that's the amount that would re be reflected on the 5-9, and they'd also treat it as if it were a zero interest account. Great. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Tom. Nate, last but not least. Nate, your question. And we get these questions quite often. I received a letter from a doctor requesting that my resident be allowed a service animal. My resident already has one animal but wants another. The letter does not state that she needs an additional animal. How should I handle this? All right, thank you, Vicki. There must be a separate verification for the second service animal. Now keep in mind that there also must be a nexus, a connection between the resident disability and the need for that service animal as a reasonable accommodation. Now a good verification form will ask this question. Is there a nexus between the disability and the need for this particular service animal as a reasonable accommodation? Very good, Nate. That was very good. Well, there you have it from four of our experts. I want to thank you for tuning in today. And until next Tuesday, take care.